Hallelujah. I'll give you something to shout about. If you'll go with me to Hebrews chapter 7 and read about three verses with me together. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Now that's something to shout about right there. Father, help the preacher and add your blessing to your word. Amen. You may be seated. When I look back over the years, I see a lot of uh, trash, mistakes, breakdowns, breakups, dangers, toils, snares, traps, weakness, sickness. And you see the same thing. And I've been at this a long time, and as I looked around this morning, I see some of you who have known the Lord for decades. Notice that, decades. And in spite of all of that, you're sitting in here worshiping the Lord today. Now the question is, why? What kept you? How could it be that after all of this, you still want Jesus? Jesus still fills you and thrills you. Well, I'm going to answer your question for you. You are not here today because you had a made-up mind. I heard that all my life. I've got a made-up mind and I'm going to make it. You have not made it because you had a made-up mind. You made it because someone kept you. <clears throat> you wouldn't have been here had not God kept and protected you. You're not smart enough. You're not strong enough. You're not consistent enough. But God is, and God has kept you by his power. So no one can brag about anything at any time. And I think sometimes we get happy because we'll go for a span of time and not do something we think is wrong or sinful. We get really victorious feeling. And really that has nothing to do with it. You only overcame that for that period of time because of the power of God at work in you. It's God's power all the time. I went into the staff meeting Tuesday... And again, we have devotions and prayer. I do a little teaching. And I told the staff that morning, someone has called your name in prayer today. And I think some of them thought that I was going to say that Sandra and I got up early and went down the list and called everybody's name in prayer, and we didn't. I'm sure she called some names in prayer, and I mentioned some names in prayer, but I didn't call the whole staff in prayer. What I meant was that day Jesus had prayed for them. Today Jesus has prayed for you. Your name was uttered in glory. Your name spoken to God the Father in the holiest of all places. Your name, your situation, your life. Verbalized in front of Almighty God the Creator. Now, what is it about us that we can't grasp the fact that God is our keeper? You look back through the Old Testament, which was for our understanding and our enlightenment, and you see that God 
was faithful to his people, but his people were never faithful to God. And for some reason, I will never understand it, God wouldn't give up on them. So he had a plan. He didn't change his mind. He doesn't change anything. He was teaching people that since you can't keep yourself, I love you enough that I'm going to make a way that I can keep you. So the old covenant was a, was a covenant that said God's faithful, but people aren't and people can't be. So God said, now that I've shown you that, I'm going to bring in a new covenant. It was his plan all along. I'm going to bring in a new covenant. And this time, I'm going to write my laws on your minds and in your hearts. And I will remember your sins and transgressions no more. I will do that for you. And you will live forever. And here's the covenant that I will make. Here's the guarantee that I will make. It will not be up to you deciding to follow me and serve me. It will be up to Jesus who is the surety. Go back to, there it is. He has become a surety of a better covenant. A guarantee. He's the guarantee. He's the underwriter of your salvation. You can't do it. Jesus has done it. And God now can accept me fully and totally without any reservation whatsoever because Jesus, his risen son, guarantees that I will walk in truth because he's in me. And I will walk in obedience because he's in me. Whatever he is, I am. Therefore, Jesus, my guarantee, allows me to be totally accepted in the Father's throne room from now on. He's the guarantee. Jesus is. How do I know I'm going to heaven? Because Jesus died for my sins and rose again for my justification. I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. He's the guarantee of a better covenant. Next verse again. There were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. In other words, those Old Testament priests would be ordained, they would carry on their ministry, they would age, they would die. But this priest comes along who died but rose again and will never die again. Therefore, he continues forever as our great high priest. Next verse. He has an unchangeable Priesthood, unchangeable. Everything about God is the same. So here is this priest that is now forever and unchangeable who does this next thing in verse 25. He is able to save to the uttermost. That means totally, completely, and forever. And I guess I'll just preach this till I die. You are not saved just for now. You're not saved for a little while. This is never called temporary salvation or temporary life. It's called eternal salvation and eternal life. And once you get it, it becomes eternal. If you could lose it, it wouldn't be eternal. It'd be temporary. Because he did it, it is an unchanging relationship and an unchanging experience. And since he does it, he covers all the bases. He completely, totally, and eternally redeems us from everything that would displease God the Father and separate us from him. He always lives to make intercession for them. In Isaiah chapter 42, <coughs> hundreds of years before Jesus ever came, the Father said, I'm going to send my servant. And he meant his son, Jesus. And he will become the covenant for the people. He's the covenant. In the Old Testament, it was blood from an animal that was the covenant. But in the New Testament, it's the blood of Jesus. That's why he sat with his disciples and he said, this blood 
is my blood shed for you. This is the new covenant. Not like the old one. Because the old one was about dying priests and dying animals. But this new one is about a priest who lives forever. Who sheds his blood once for all. And then as a priest, he lives forever to make intercession for them. I don't know that we can really grasp this. Right now. Jesus is praying. He's the greatest prayer warrior in the universe. That's what he does. Right now he's prophet. I mean, when he was on earth, he was prophet. And now he's priest. One of these days, he'll sit on a throne and rule the universe as king. He'll be all three of those, as a matter of fact. Right now he's operating as your priest. Which means he's always bringing yours to God and God's to you. Whatever you have need of, Jesus takes it to the Father. Whatever you're going through, Jesus says it to the Father. He's praying for you. And that's why you're here today. That's why you didn't commit that great sin. And some of you that did, that's why you are forgiven and are back now. He's praying for you while I'm preaching to you. He's praying for me while I'm preaching to you. He's interceding. He ever lives. There's not a moment when Jesus is not interceding. Do do you get this, brothers and sisters? He never stops interceding. He says to the Father, "This, my brother and your son has this need. Father, because of my sacrifice, I bring it to you. Then he says to us, that's my father, but you can call him your father too. And let me tell you what my father wants you to know. And then he reveals the secrets of God to the children of God. Because Jesus is ever seating back and forth, back and forth. Tell God all about it. And then God says, go tell the people all about it. Back and forth. That's why every one of us can be guaranteed that we're going to heaven because of Jesus, the covenant. Those who call on him, those who believe in him, those who confess can be guaranteed that no matter what they are facing now, and it may be the worst thing in your life, and you think it cannot get any worse. Well, I've met some people this week for whom it got worse. I heard them say, it can't get any worse. And two days later, it did. And they said, I did not think I could take it anymore. But I'm here by the power of God. I've said many, many times we're all messed up to some degree because we were all tainted by sin and God is working on us. But that won't cease until we stand before him. And I'm telling you, I don't know what I'm going to face before I die. And neither do you. I want to say this to these young parents who dedicated these beautiful children this morning. You do not know what you're going to face before this is over. But I'm telling you, you will face something. And it will take you to the brink. And it will stretch you till you think you can't make it. And you feel like you will die. But Jesus is praying for you. Jesus has already mentioned this to the Father. And when you get there, Jesus will have already informed the Father and held you up before the Father. And I declare to all of you, there is not a situation, there is not a problem, there is not a sin that is able to separate you from the love and the grip of Almighty God. We've been through it. You've heard the expression, hell and high water. We've all been through it. And it's not over yet. But I take refuge in this. When I'm going through it, somebody is praying for me. Somebody who's holy, 
harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, somebody who gets heard every time they pray. Did you know that every time Jesus prays, God answers his prayer? One of the more familiar passages in the scriptures is in Luke chapter 22. And when you start, when I start reading this, don't tune me out. Don't say, yeah, I know that one. No, you don't. Jesus is coming to the end of his time with his disciples. He's about to go into Jerusalem and ride in on a donkey. And you know what happens after that. And he has already said to the disciples, um, you're all going to be scattered and you're all going to forsake me. And all of them said, no, not us. No, we've been through too much. We've been through too much with, with you and with each other. It will not happen. Jesus said, but the scriptures say, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Isaiah. He quoted scripture. It was already told beforehand, prophesied in advance that Jesus was going to be struck. The shepherd would be captured. The shepherd would be crucified and the sheep would be scattered. But they had the, the, the immaturity, I started to say the brazen audacity, but that wasn't really what it is. It's immaturity. They hadn't been there yet to say, not us, Peter especially. If everybody else leaves you, I won't. And if, if I'll go die with you, Lord, just tell me. Jesus pulled him over to the side said, Simon, Simon. Now there's an exclamation point there. Maybe I should have been a little more expressive or emphatic. Simon, Simon! <laughs> Indeed, Satan has asked for you. Now I don't get that. Unless somewhere in glory, at some point, Lucifer said to God the Father, let me add him. Oh, but I think he did that another time in the Bible, didn't he? With a man called Job. And it's just possible that he did it with you. But I'm not a prophet, I'm not Job, I'm not Pete. No, but you're a child of God. It's just possible that your name was not only called by Jesus one time in glory, but by Lucifer himself, who said... Just give me a little time with her. Give me an opportunity with him. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, I don't know why this happened yesterday. But as I was contemplating this, and I'm tr I didn't even have my Bible open. I was in a room just thinking. I thought, sift? I used to watch my mother sift flour to make homemade biscuits in that little metal thing that you turn, you know, a sieve. She wasn't beating it. She wasn't grinding it under her foot or pounding it. She was sifting it, which means she was separating it. Uh-oh. So I jumped up immediately and started doing a word study on sift. Do you know what the major definition of the word sift is in Greek? To separate. To separate. Jesus said, sift you as wheat. Separ separate you as wheat, meaning the kernel is left after the chaff has been separated from it. They would throw it in the wind and the wind would drive the chaff away. This takes on a whole new perspective for me right here. Satan has asked for you that he may separate you from the others. Separate you from me. And I have to stand here and say to somebody right now, Satan will use anything he can to separate you from us. He'll make you feel unwanted, unneeded. He'll make you feel foolish and left out. 
just so he can separate you from us or separate me from you because Satan knows that as long as we are together, he cannot harm us. So his intent is to isolate us. He says, God, let me at him. I want to do something that will make him pull away Make her leave. Make her exit the scene. Because when I get them alone, I can bring up their past. I can open up their wounds. I can cause them to think of their mistakes. And there will be nobody there to remind them that those things are all under the blood. I'll be able to overshadow them with doubt and fear and even wonder about their salvation. Just let me get at them and separate them. Jesus said to Simon, Satan has asked that he can separate you. But I have prayed for you. Glory to God. And I'm telling you the only reason Loran Livingston is still doing what he's doing, still in the church, still in the body, is because one day, every day, all day, Jesus has lifted me up before the Father. And Jesus always gets heard by the Father. That's the only reason you're here and you and you and you. Listen to me today. You are here because your name has been called in glory. I prayed for you that your faith not fail. What am I going to tell you now? You're not going to fail. I think that's a pattern there myself. You know as well as I do that Jesus did not say, Peter, I'm praying that you won't have to go through this. You know better than that. He is saying, you will go through it. But I've already prayed for you. It's already done. You won't fail. You'll think you failed. You'll feel that you failed. You'll be embarrassed that you think you failed. But you will not have failed me. Because when all this is over, you'll still be standing. You'll still be mine. And you'll still say that I'm yours. I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me. But now I want to use the old King James version of that. Because it says, and when you are converted. Remember that one? I thought about that a while yesterday too. When you are converted. In other words, in the condition you're in now, you can't help anybody. Amen. You just shout and run around, holler and scream and think you're loyal. You're going to think you're going to die with me and you're somebody. You're a theologian. You're a scripture quoter. My God, you're a soul winner. But you're no good to me in this condition. Because you think you can. You think you did. You think you, you, you. So when you go through this and you are converted, that means changed over. You've gone from your strength to my strength. Oh, thank you, Lord. Like when you go to another country, you got to have your dollar converted to their currency. Well, see, the currency we operate in now with flesh doesn't make anything happen in the kingdom of God. So there has to be a conversion. And that conversion is going through something you don't think you can make it through. That conversion is being isolated, separated, beat up, beat down. So that when it's all over and you get up and shake yourself, you realize I'm in another kingdom now. If I can go through that, I can go through anything. I can, I can live for Jesus now like I've never lived for him before. But it's not just about you being stronger. He said, when you're converted, when you're returned to me, which is a change of mind, strengthen your brethren. Strengthen also means establish. I'm depending on you, Peter, because of what you've gone through to go and get the family back together, get the apostles back together, bring them all back together and cause them to remember my words. 
You see, right now, you just aren't really capable of doing that until you go through a conversion where you realize it is not you but Jesus. Whisper his name. Call out his name. When that conversion takes place, you have a responsibility. And that is, get those who have been separated, left out, feel unneeded and unwanted, those who are hurting, bring them back in and say, He's faithful. He's faithful. He brought me back. He can bring you back. And I just want to tell you one more time. Before this day is over, your name will have been called time and time and time and time again in glory. There is no way a devil or height nor depth nor any other creation is able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, your Lord, who is your covenant, your guarantee, your underwriter, your surety for your salvation. Stand with me, please. If you want to clap, that's fine. Go ahead. Give God praise. Anybody feeling pretty weak right now? Maybe isolated, separated? Anybody need to understand more fully and deeply that Jesus is your guarantee? He's your guarantee. Come down here and join me. I want to sing a song with you. Just come right down here and join me. I'll take a moment. Come down from the balcony. So far, all we've got is security people. I appreciate your willingness to pray. But I want some people who feel like they can't make it right now. I just don't know if I can make it. Oh, I got something to say. There's no way you can't make it. They didn't hear me. You, you guys didn't hear me. <clears throat> There's no way you can't make it. No way in the universe that you're not going to make it. If you call on Jesus. If you call on Jesus. They just sang it together. Everybody just whisper his name. Jesus. 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 Say it again. Jesus. He's the answer. He's the victory. He's the guarantee. Jesus. Jesus. <clears throat> Maybe I'm too personal sometimes. I got to talk. See, I'm looking at uh, people who are going through it. Now, Vicki has cancer, right? I don't know what this brother is crying about. I'm looking at staff members who have disabled children. I don't know why you guys are here. I don't know why you're here. I don't know why so many tears are being shed right down in this area. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Some of you have, have already used up all your tears. I can tell that. There aren't any left. Listen to your pastor. You don't need any tears. You don't need any strength. You don't need to do anything but speak the name of Jesus. If he brought you to this place, he'll take you to the next place. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? 
I don't worry about the guarantees I make to you about the guarantees he's made to us. He's faithful. I do not know how any of this will turn out for you guys down here right now. But I know how it's going to turn out in eternity. Quickly, quickly. I need some church council members to come down quickly. Don't, don't look around, just come. You don't even need any oil this morning. Just get in the midst of these people. Some staff members, just get in the middle of the people. And I want you to begin to pray for them. Touch them. Hold them up. Bless them. Call their name. And we're going to sing a song while you connect in faith. No other name. No other name. Can I be really, really honest with everybody? I don't, again, I don't know how all of this is going to turn out for you. Except that God will be glorified. And you will be amazed. That's all I know. But right now, in the waiting, give God glory. Give God the benefit of the doubt. Give him time. Let him have his way in your life. And do not let Satan sift you, isolate and separate you from the people, from the word, from the Lord. God is as close to you now as he ever has been or ever will be right now. He's faithful. Don't bow your heads. Don't close your eyes. I want you to walk out of this place having seen me raise my hands. I don't have any power. I've been given pastoral authority. That's all the power I have. But I believe God honors it. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you with that good word you read this morning that it will go down into the marrow of your bones, into the chambers of your soul. I bless you with that life-giving, healing word, that balm from Gilead, that oil of anointing. I bless you with the sweet spirit of God that will keep you when your life is coming unraveled. You will remember Jesus is calling your name in prayer calling your name in prayer. You call his name, but he calls your name too. You know him as Jesus. He knows you as whoever you are. But I got an, oh Lord, don't let me go here. Oh Jesus, I just, what? L let me tell you something. You go to the book of Revelation. He says to one of the churches over there, if you'll overcome, I'll give you a white stone. And in that stone, a name written 
that no one knows but me and you. Good. They don't know it, and they won't ever know it. It's between me and you. That's the name I'm giving you. And only I know it, and only you know it. And when I call it, you know I'm calling you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Help me praise him, somebody. I'm trying to quit. But you see, when you get there, James, the Lord's going to say, come here, come up, come up here. Just stand right here. The Lord's going to say, James, here's your stone. Now that's the name I'm going to call you by. Put it in your pocket or your robe and ever so often pull it out and know that that's the name I know you by. Now you, she doesn't know what this is and he doesn't know what this is, but you and I know what this is. That's my nickname. That's my pet name. That's... That's your name. And he's going to do that to you and you. And every one of us will have a pet name, a lover's name. So I encourage you, stay faithful, stay strong. When you can't pray, that's all right. I know somebody who is praying. That's right. And he gets hurt every time he prays. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. See you Wednesday night.